Hi guys, welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. Today we're going to be doing a little exploration of Chattanooga whiskey. Chattanooga whiskey, I, my first introduction to Chattanooga whiskey was when I was in Tennessee visiting a friend. I went out to a liquor store and I wanted something local. I wanted something from there. Now I knew that I didn't like Dickel. And I knew that I have a long history with Jack Daniels and I can get Jack anywhere. So I wanted something from Tennessee while I was there. So I ended up finding a bottle of Chattanooga whiskey and it was their barrel strength version at the time. It was when they were first starting out. It was sourced whiskey from MGP and I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, that bottle was killed years ago. And, and I, I hadn't bought another one since because I really liked it, but I was still exploring. And, I didn't, and at that point in my, my exploration journey, I wasn't buying repeat bottles. I was buying something new every time I went to the store. I didn't want to just keep buying the same bottles. And, you know, I don't want to be the guy that just comes into Total Wine and walks out with three big old giant bottles of Jack Daniels. And that's all he ever drinks. That's not me. I'm the explorer. I want to explore different flavors. So, I got the Chattanooga whiskey, enjoyed it, it's gone. I didn't replace it, but now I regret that because they're no longer making their old, or they're no longer putting out their old MGP stuff. They're putting out now their own distillate, and of course it's different. It's different. It's not MGP anymore. Well, I should have grabbed an extra one of those just to throw in my collection for the future. Water under the bridge. So now here we, what we have here is their new stuff. This is their 91 proof um, regular straight bourbon whiskey. Now their claim to fame now that they're making their own stuff is they're a high malt Tennessee bourbon. They're the only high malt Tennessee bourbon. Okay, this is their 111 proof cast strength. This one's in a Solera situation. The 91 goes through a Solera situation. The 111 does not. This is a store pick that's 118 proof, if I remember correctly. And this is their rye, which is a 99 proof. Let's try them. Let's try them and see what I think. These came from a virtual tasting that I did with the South Florida, Southwest Florida Bourbon Society. And we did a Chattanooga online Zoom kind of tasting with the guys from Chattanooga Whiskey and they went through their whole history and how they make the whiskey, the bring the bourbon. And we went through the tasting on these three. Um, I haven't had the store pick before today, so that's going to be completely new to me. I have had these three before in that live tasting, and I want to preface this by saying that I always promise to be 100% honest with you guys about whether I like something or not. So here we go. It is very malty. I get a perfuminess, and I think it's coming from the rye component of the mash bill. I get mostly the rye malt and the and the wheat notes. I'm not getting a lot of traditional bourbon notes. It almost, I mean, I know that this isn't a high rye situation. It's a high malt situation. But the rye that they're using seems to stand out to me. It's black tea. It's a little, a little bit harsh. It's, it goes brown sugar and cherry. A little bit of caramel, 
a lot of malt. And I don't mean a lot of malt in a good way. Um, I'm a scotch guy, so malted things are not really a big problem for me. But mm, mm, I don't love the 91. I really don't. Now the 101, the cast strength, it kind of tamps down on that a little bit, on those notes that I don't love. This one I'm getting, it's leaning more towards cherry cola, but still that rye note is there, hanging out. This one's a little more bready, a little, a little sourdough-ish. It comes off a bit young as well. Both of these come off a bit young. I would be interested to see what these taste like given a few more years to see where they go. Let's try the store pick, a single barrel. I'm not sure if it's a store pick or not, but it's a single barrel. There is a discernible difference on the nose. This one goes black tea and licorice. Definitely black tea and licorice over the 111. So far, the one I like the best is a single barrel at 118 proof. I, I like that one the best. Now, this is the rye, and it's a 99 proof. <sighs> nice, big, clear rye notes. And it's funny, that black tea kind of kind of shows up here as well. There's vanilla and caramel hiding behind the rye notes. And then, but then on the flavor, on the taste, there's a, there's a note that I just do not like. <laughs> do not like. I'm not even sure what it is because it like kind of hits me. Like, um, it's weird. Let me see. It's a bitter, very bitter, and there's a funkiness to it. And it, it the aftertaste hits me like if you drink, um, like store bought chicken broth. You know, the like Swanson's or whatever, like cheap store-bought chicken broth. The aftertaste kind of hits me like the aftertaste from chicken broth, which is very unexpected and very weird coming from a whiskey, but it that's what it reminds me of. I don't, I don't love this. I don't love this. This is okay. This single barrel is the best of the four, but I'm not thrilled with what Chattanooga whiskey is doing. Not thrilled. The, I really appreciate the fact that they're doing their own thing. And that's, that's awesome. I'm glad they're getting away from MGP and making their own stuff. I'm glad they got, you know, made enough money through the MGP process of using sourced whiskey to where now they're using all their own whiskey and putting out their own products. I absolutely respect the hell out of that. I, I love that they're doing that. This just doesn't fit my flavor profile. It doesn't, doesn't work for me. It just, it really doesn't. There are notes present here and here 
that honestly, I, I don't know if I can describe. There's a note on the nose that somewhere between packing peanuts and and cardboard, like wet cardboard. But then there's a fruitiness mixed with that. And there's a plasticiness, like a, like a chemical note. And then on this, I'm picking up like a little bit of nuttiness and raisin. In addition to the other flavors that are hanging out there. But out of Chattanooga Whiskey's current production, the 111, which is fairly available, it's available here. Um, that's my favorite version of their products. This single barrel is, in my opinion, superior to everything. But this is a one-off honey barrel, clearly. I mean, it's it's an off-profile. You know, that's just really nice. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely the best of these four. Now, is that available? No, I not for me. I've never seen a single barrel Chattanooga product anywhere in stores. I only see um, these two. I don't even see the rye here. Uh, which is fine with me because I would never buy the rye. The only one that I would buy to put in the collection to have, you know, to let people taste is the 111. I wouldn't buy it for my own personal enjoyment. It just doesn't fit my flavor profile. But there it is. Chattanooga Whiskey. I love that they're making their own stuff. I love that they've actually like gotten away from MGP and, and are doing their own thing. I'm hoping that as these products age a little more, I'm going to enjoy them more. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.